all this is dr mobin sayed from drbean.com welcome to one more show so i had to delete my video about ivermectin yesterday because the study that it was based on was full of shit and i wanted to make sure that we can understand why number 1 and number 2 i was really surprised that one of the authors of the study was attacking others saying do you not know how to read studies do you not understand the difference between causality and association and i was surprised that there are many studies which have associations there are many studies that are preprints there are many studies that are uh, not retros uh, prospective double blind rcts so what is going on with this study and what is going on with the authors or at least one of the author just attacking people about their own study so i found something very interesting the level of uh problems with this study are very similar in my opinion to sergi sphere study it is just as scandalous but what is interesting for me is that the instead of saying the authors that hey we made a mistake we backing off sorry this was not a good study we we have withdrawn it instead of that they are actually they've joined others to attack folks poor folks who are trying to figure out if ivermectin works or not really really crazy time so let's look at this so references this is drbean.com this is a first news which actually author of the one of the author of the study had actually put this link out and i got surprised that why would he put a link out for his own study and the link said flawed research abstract leads to ivermectin falsehoods and it turned out actually this title is even misleading and you'll find out as we discuss that the authors of the study would rather have this title than to say a flawed garbage study has misled people because in that case it is the authors who probably did not do a good job here it seems like the viewers the readers the in, the people like us are misinterpreting and we are just that naive that we cannot understand what the study means and how to read studies and i was surprised that the authors were lecturing others to understand how to read studies so i'm going to go through this this is one of the links flawed research abstract i would like us to change this title in our head to say flawed and a bad study then here is the actual study the journal in which the study's abstract or a summary of the study is printed in this journal why was it printed in this journal let me make one more comment here this study is actually withdrawn this study was so bad that it could not pass peer review and the the authors withdrew this when a study is withdrawn ideally the publishing system should say something about it for example i'll give you an example of this one here the lancet this is sergi sphere study about hydroxychloroquine remember they said retraction hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine with or without macrolide for treatment of covid-19 a multi national registry analysis remember this scandal and lancet came back and said based on this development we can no longer vouch for the veracity of the primary data sources due to this unfortunate development the authors request that the paper be retracted so when you go to a to find a paper that was flawed and damaged and removed or withdrawn it is written somewhere but if you go in here this is actually a withdrawn study but it doesn't say anywhere that it is a withdrawn study why does it not say that it is a withdrawn study i have no idea if this journal has this kind of a policy that if there is a study that is damaged and bad and flawed and they would still leave it like that then that is their problem but i'm going to show you actually why not i show you first that the author said look at this in the associate press where i would actually go over some of the discussions that authors did here the researchers uh, i would hardly call this study and the folks 
the research detailed in the one page abstract was not from a peer reviewed study nor was it a clinical trial it relied on existing data from the patient record and the full manuscript was withdrawn after the authors and reviewers found major flaws this much of the statement is sufficient for for sure for the dismay of many for the displeasure of many who have talked about this study or who have thought that this study is proving something about about ivermectin for the displeasure of them yes this study does not prove it but there is actually a bigger problem here this study was actually flawed and withdrawn but other than this news article it actually doesn't mention anywhere and even the authors one of the authors continue to attack and lecture others to understand how studies are done and what do they mean he links to this article every once in a while but does not articulate that hey our study was flawed and withdrawn so any discussions of the study are useless so of course i had to delete my videos i cannot stand behind garbage studies so international journal of infectious diseases this is where it is printed this is a study that i discussed yesterday and look there is no clue here there is no clue to say this was not peer reviewed or this did not pass peer review there is no clue here to say it is pre print there is no clue over here to say that data was incorrect actually there is no data presented here because this is the summary and in the summary people are not crazy who are looking at these summaries and trying to make a conclusion as authors are kind of attacking them to say do you not understand how to read a study people are not crazy to understand ivermectin use was associated with decreased mortality in patients with covid-19 compared to remdesivir and i remember um, i saw one of the tweet from the one of the authors saying you guys whoever he was attacking do you not know how to understand the difference between association and causality i think a better statement would have been this study was flawed we have withdrawn it any further discussion about this is not correct and i am sorry that this was hap this happened please let's not talk about it we're talking with the journal to say please remove it so either remove it or put a big label up here that this study is withdrawn instead of mocking and shaming and embarrassing and making fun and attacking the people to say you do not know how to read a study and even more fun here this state this statement here further double blinded placebo controlled rcts with large samples are required for definite conclusion very smart statement because this statement allows them to say because this this study is association study so they're right technically they're correct in saying this that hey we should do a double blind study now imagine if there is a double blind study that comes in and that says ivermectin works then authors would say see we wrote it in our conclusion that you should do that and here we were already seeing similar results if a study comes out and says no then they would say see this is why we said we needed more studies they are using this statement to then refer to malaysia study to tell people that you are so silly i'm being nice here that you are using our study's data to make your conclusion while we said look for rcts and here is an rct and that says ivermectin doesn't work so ivermectin doesn't work this is the net that they are weaving on what just a simple thing this whole study was garbage it was caught as a subpar study it was withdrawn that's it it should actually not be over here either and if it is here there should be a big label with it to say withdrawn study this is the some data about this doesn't matter here is a study i was surprised yesterday so i i fell for it as well you saw other presenters fell for it you saw people wrote literature about it i was surprised yesterday when i was looking at this and my mistake that i talked about this study 
and I did not, you know that I normally go deeper in the data and highlight it and draw it. I kept thinking, where is that data? And I thought, okay, maybe there is a summary at some point, they're going to re release the remaining data as well and we'll have it. Long behold, they were not going to release that data because that is withdrawn. That data we're never going to see. And in here, I just kept looking at it to say, why the heck is this just this much? Now, I want to show you some interactions. So one of the authors, this study is, this study is history, the study that we are discussing. This study's history is that a fourth year medical student put together this idea of the study. He then talked with other uh, contributors, here Jose as well, he's an infectious disease doctor. So they worked together to create data and we know about that. Then they withdrew the study. Now this was in August that they submitted the study. So to be fair to them, they submitted the study and then there was a process of approval and review and everything. So what happened was there were two people who were reviewers for abstract. So authors had submitted a summary of the study and then the whole study. There were two people in this journal whose job was to look at the abstract of the study, to look at this to say, does it look nice? Does it look useful, valuable? And they too said, I would suppose that yeah, good. And so it got printed. So they too got fooled as well. So it's not that the whole world is just silly and cannot understand it. People saw this and they thought this was an interesting data point. Then the actual thorough review started in which glaring gaps appeared and the author said, we are withdrawing. However, meanwhile, this got printed. However, also, meanwhile, the other RCT from Malaysia came out. So author said, did we not tell you here to look for other RCTs and now that we have another RCT, our data is of no value. But once again, the discussion is not about their data or their conclusions. At one, I'll read it to you that they said, our conclusions are not relevant. Well, your conclusions cannot even be made because the data was incorrect. So they're relevant or not is not even a question. So back here, then the authors, they said, hey, look, Malaysian study says it doesn't work. So we believe it doesn't work. Fine. That is okay. That is a, an opinion. Then someone used, actually a friend of mine, Dr. Pierre Khori. So as you can tell, I've been going through this. He used this study, just like I said yesterday. Why did I say this yesterday? It said here in their abstract, to our knowledge, this is the largest association study of patients with COVID-19 mortality in ivermectin. They said it. It's the largest in the world. So when they said it, of course, people are going to use that. So when this was used, here is the response. I am one of the authors of the study, this retrospective study. So retrospective in quotation mark as if, do you not get what retrospectives are? There are retrospective studies that are used by CDCs as well. There is nothing bad with a study being retrospective. Sure, that retrospective studies do not have as much of a value as a prospective study is. But imagine, should this have been the answer? This retrospective study looks for association, not causality. Now that we have randomized clinical trials, we can say with certainty that ivermectin does not work at all for COVID. I recommend to read the conclusion of the abstract. How about if I fix this statement to say, hey, colleague, we had a bad study. We have withdrawn it. Any discussion of this is useless. Instead of lecturing someone. So, of course, when you get this lecture that do you not understand association between, uh, difference between association and causality? Do you not understand that? Did you not read our conclusion? So I went back and I said, what the heck is wrong with the conclusion? And so, of course, this, uh, this statement over here, now they can hook into Malaysian study and say, well, Malaysian study says it doesn't work. So that is our conclusion. But the point is, the study itself should not even be here. Okay, so then come these fact checkers. So I want to now very quickly 
show you some of the drawings that I did about this study. But please keep in mind underlying this whole debacle. Anyone who is talking about this study should stop talking about it. Anyone who uses this to say ivermectin works should stop talking about it. Anyone who says uses this to say ivermectin does not work should stop talking about it. Anyone who is looking at the conclusions should stop looking at them because in actuality this study does not even exist and it should not be here because it was withdrawn. Now, let's let me walk you through some of my drawings because I really want to. First, this is not a flawed abstract that making people go forget the science. All of a sudden, all of us do not know anymore what science is and what is an association study versus causality. Here is what is actually going on. A fourth year student creates a study. That study's abstract gets approved. They, they do a scoring system on the abstract this journal in which it is printed. Two people did it, they scored it, it looked very high, they said good. When the actual study was going to be printed and the data was going to be published, that, that bigger detailed study, the thorough analysis could not pass the muster. And so it got withdrawn. So my request to the journal is to either put a label on, on it to say this is a withdrawn study, or remove that study from their site, just like Lancet removed the study and just put a retraction there. And similarly, my call on authors will be to be clear instead of attacking people to say, do you not understand what is association versus causality? They should simply say, we had data, we thought there was something interesting there. That data is not really, it was not correct data. We were missing certain pieces. We withdrew the study. That is the right way to work with that. Then you, they can say, why don't you look at Malaysian study? That actually is proving that it doesn't work and here is our point. That, sure, that is a good scientific discussion. We like ivermectin or we don't like ivermectin, but we cannot refute this kind of a statement. So what I did, I deleted this video. What are the flaws? Is the flaw in the abstract? So somehow the authors would be happy if someone writes that this abstract was bad and that is making people fall and forget science. No, 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 the study was bad. So AP said flawed abstract. No, the abstract was not flawed. The study was flawed. So author's conduct of not clarifying this they actually, to their, once again, to be fair to them, this Associate Press article is actually linked by the author, one of the authors. But the problem is that AP News article itself is spinning the whole situation. And I'll go over this with you. So they are just now busy. The authors themselves, or author, one of the authors, have actually started attacking people who are using this study to say, do you not? So, this is like, you mad, bro? You do not know how to read studies? So the question is, really, what is the flaw? The, here are the flaws that they are piecemealing, giving it to various news systems. The flaws are, number one, apparently, when they compared the patients, they compared patients who were in outpatient taking ivermectin. That means, imagine if I have COVID and I am at home and I'm taking ivermectin versus a patient who is, and the, the article said had to be hospitalized. So I want to stay within that context. Had to be hospitalized is a different statement than hospitalized. So what does, whatever that means, but the remdesivir arm, we can kind of suppose, although this is a dangerous area, the whole study is in, um, manipulation of words, the whole debacle. But anyways, the, the article says that the people in the remdesivir were older, sicker, and, were had, and had to be hospitalized. So you cannot compare these two groups. Yes, I would say at the risk of interpreting this shitty data in general, 
and this thing in general. But yes, I would say that somebody who is in hospital, comparing them to somebody who is sitting at home, doesn't make sense. Why would we do that? And I am surprised that on one end, the authors are lecturing the people to say, do you not understand the difference between association and causality? On the other end, they themselves do not know that in the data, you should not compare outpatient person to an in-hospital person. And somebody else had to tell them during the peer review. I will defend the authors by saying maybe they did not know. They had pulled that data. They did not bother to know what kind of um, patient severity was there. And they just got excited about the data and they said, let's take this forward. And when the peer review occurred, these peers said, why not we look a little more about the data for the kind of intensity of COVID? And that is where the thing started breaking. And they said, oh, sorry, we should have done. Ideally, they should have done it before. If they can lecture the world to understand how to, to read the studies, I would say they need a lecture on how to write the studies. So this is one of the flaws, big flaws. This in itself should just stop the study and say, done. The second big flaw, they did not know the vaccination status of the people. That's a big flaw as well. Then they say, authors, we realized that there were more confounding variables. Don't you think that these are the statements to make in Twitter instead of attacking people to say, do you know how to read and write? Instead of that, saying that, hey, we had a study. That study didn't have the correct data. We thought it had awesome data. But when we dig, dug deeper with our peers, ideally, authors should have done this beforehand. Peers should look at that and say, all good. This is the simplest part of this whole research to say in hospital versus not in hospital is not the right thing. But anyways, they said there were more confounding variables. Okay. Then this is something that I missed. So shame on me for this. And I actually discussed it yesterday that ivermectin was only 1,000 people and remdesivir were 42,000 people or something like that. And so the, the arms were very imbalanced. And remember I said, it seems like ivermectin is used less. And that is why they only could find less people. But still, if I was doing a peer review, that was a glaring flag on the study to say, one arm is 40,000 people and the other arm is 1,000 people. They are very imbalanced arms. So that was another issue. You tell me, with a study with such glaring gaps, do we even reach a point of saying, what does the conclusion say? And debate the conclusion and people's understanding of the conclusion and their knowledge of retrospective versus prospective studies. The, the study itself, do, do you know that we wasted time yesterday talking about it and we are now wasting time again today. So then they said, because in our abstract, we have connected, we have said that larger double blind RCT prospective studies are needed. So meanwhile, as we were waiting for our study to be published, and to be fair to them, they're correct. They submitted that, I believe, in August of last year. And then this year came the Malaysian study. So they said, now that the Malaysian study is here, our abstract kind of points out to any such study. So we have it and so we should not think about ivermectin as useful. Okay. But where is the idea of our study is withdrawn? And they say our results are not relevant. As if the results were actually useful, valuable and were coming from a good study. It's just that the environment has changed, the new factors have come on, new knowledge has been evolved, seen, and so the previous knowledge has become outdated. That's not the question. The study itself. 
So in my opinion, that all is just sugarcoating the basic problem. Even the attacks on the other is to take your eye off the basic fact that the study is actually incorrect. So the idea that the results are not relevant is not even a relevant question. The only relevant statement, the only one relevant statement that can be made is study withdrawn, no further discussions. That is the only statement that can be made. Now, I want to walk you through some of these statements here, which are very interesting. So one, the research detailed on in the one page abstract was not from a peer reviewed study, so not peer reviewed, nor was it a clinical trial, so not a clinical trial. Manuscript was withdrawn after the authors reviewed found major flaws. Authors and reviewers found major flaws. The researchers and experts told the Associate Press that the findings are no longer relevant. Well, researchers and experts should say there are no findings. There is no question of findings are no longer relevant. The relevancy of a finding will be if it is emerging from good data. So then Associate Press joins authors to start beating people who are talking about the study to say, hey, did you look at the study? It shows great association of ivermectin with reduction in mortality. Social media users are misinterpreting a research paper abstract, falsely claiming its findings prove that the antiparasitic drug ivermectin is an effective treatment for COVID-19, maybe more effective than approved antiviral drugs. Do you know that this should not have been the fact here? The fact should have been this was a withdrawn study, which is still up without any hint to the reviewers. And reviewers are trying to use this data to make their statements. That is the fact. So the fact here should have been that, and the story should have been over. But no, this was their chance to embarrass and shame and hammer the people who believe in anti-parasitic drug. So then look at this. The approximately 500 word abstract, this abstract, the summary, underwent review and scoring by two independent reviewers, but did not go through a full peer review, much more rigorous process. And then high scoring abstracts accepted for presentation at IMED are published as a special. So they were in a hurry. There was a conference going on. Two people, this abstract came in, they gave it to two people. They said, do you think it looks good? They said, yeah, looks good, print it. They said, okay, we'll look at the rest of the study afterwards. Let's just print it. Fine, that, that can happen. And it's a mistake. It, it happened. They should simply say, sorry. And I can understand if they're not removing it from here because the print version may have it. But at least they can take the advantage of an online system to put a label here. They cannot do it on the print, but they can do it here. For the print, they can follow up later on to say, Areta or correction in the last print, we had a study that was not, that was withdrawn. Okay. Th that you're not going to find any inkling of such a thing over here. So then they say that uh, disease without further review by general editor, associate editor. So the editing process did not go forward. Ayakov Efimenko, sorry for not pronouncing correctly, a fourth year medical student at the University of Miami who plans to, do be, to be a plastic surgeon, was the lead author of the study which evaluated the difference in mortality between this. Okay, so a fourth year student said, let's do this. While the study found that ivermectin was associated with decrease and blah, Dr. Jose said, an infectious, infectious disease specialist at the university told the AP that association is not the same thing as causality. <laughs> that's, again, that's not the discussion. And we understand association. Yesterday when I did the video, which I deleted afterwards because this whole thing was there, I said this is an association study. It is not a causality study. Dr. Zamora noted that the abstract states that the larger randomized clinical trials would be needed to draw a new conclusion. That is their saving grace that they had written it in there. And they said, because we wrote it, and then the Malaysian study came in, 
we have reached the conclusion that ivermectin doesn't work. Fine. That is their saving grace. They had written it in the abstract. But they cannot shame people to say, do you not know how to read the abstracts? Then, Effie Menko told the AP that he submitted the abstract to the conference in August 2021. So this all happened. They submitted it. Then the review processes occurred. The printed abstract happened. The Malaysian study came in in the meantime. So the knowledge changed. That's We should be fair to them for that. So they said they submitted a full manuscript that was peer reviewed, but later withdrew it before after evaluating several key flaws. So what are the flaws? We received a lot of feedback and we realized that there were was a lot of confounding variables and that the study overall was very weak. This is the statement to make when responding to people who are using the study's abstract, unfortunately, sadly, because the abstract is still up, to simply say the study was weak. We had withdrawn it. Please, sorry, don't use it. It would really serve no purpose. Yes, of course, it would serve no purpose. <laughs> then, Efimenko said he outlined those issues in the limit limitation section of the withdrawal manuscript. So he wrote it in the limitations in the bigger manuscript, but because that manuscript was withdrawn, we cannot read the limitations. This is what I was thinking about yesterday, that where is that detail? And I thought maybe that detail would follow and this was something that needed to be out quickly. However, the condensed abstract that was published online was not able to be com to accommodate this information. Well, I will submit to you that if abstract can accommodate, we controlled for the following demographic co comorbidities and treatments that may affect COVID-19 survival outcomes, age, gender, race, ethnicity, nicotine use, diabetes, mellitus, obesity, chronic lower respiratory disease, ischemic heart disease, tocilizumab, glucocorticoids, and ventilator use. They could have taken this all out and said, we match people with the demographic variables. And guess what? They, they can skip the word guess what? And we were not able to match people on their severity of the disease. They could have said that. So it's not that they, that is the problem. Among the variables that could skew the research, also known as confounding variables, was the fact that patients give ivermectin were not hospitalized and were less sick than the patients given remdesivir who were older and had to be hospitalized. Fair enough. Just this much is sufficient to say, throw this study away. And thank the authors to say, thank you very much. You did all this query and data analysis and everything. But you know what? They're not matching the two arms. And now lecturing occurs. Instead of saying here, guys, this was a bad study. Sorry, it happened. Lecturing starts. So Dr. Nicholas Mark, an ICU doctor at Swedish Medical Center in Seattle outlined some of the issues on Twitter and he said remdesivir is given to people who are hospitalized. So that all we understand. Now check this out. More, most credible doctors don't give ivermectin. How about you say here most credible authors do not make such mistakes. Very few hospitals have it even allowed to give. Fine, that is correct. And so when you compare ivermectin versus remdesivir de facto, what you're doing is you are com comparing somebody who's well enough, which is correct. That is the problem with the study. But then he goes on to bash people and say, most people sharing the abstract online likely weren't aware of the difference between association and causality study. So Mark explained that the highest quality scientific evidence comes from the prospective blinded normalized trials. Really, that is a lecture here? Instead of saying the study was bad, the lecture is you are understanding it wrong. So superficially, this looks amazing, right? Mark said it shows a reduction in mortality when one thing was given versus something else. And that can totally confuse people if you're not well versed. No, no, it's not that we were not well versed to become confused. <laughs> this is what was in the abstract. What we did not know was that the study was withdrawn because the data was incorrect. And then look at this last statement. 
both Efimenko and Gonzalez de Mora clarified that they do not recommend it for such use, nor does Gonzalez de Mora prescribe it to patients with COVID-19. So when are we going to, since when are we going to ask a fourth year medical student to tell us what does he recommend ivermectin or not? Or for that matter, any drug, even aspirin or not? Why did they try to publish this study? If the authors or one of the authors is such well-versed, why did he try to publish a study with such confound? And I'll show you more. It is not all. There are more. For example, two routers, they say, but the authors told routers that some have misinterpreted the publication. Oh, no, the publication was bad. As it is not a peer-reviewed study and not concrete evidence ivermectin is an effective treatment against COVID-19. You tell me, does it say anywhere over here it is not peer-reviewed? This is why I had its metadata open to see where does it say that it is not peer-reviewed? What happened? Where did we miss this? Where does it say it is not peer-reviewed? Where does it say it was bad study? Where does it say it is withdrawn? Where? And then here they're making fun of peer. And then at one point they say one more thing. Ayakov Efimenko's first author, I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce it correctly. First author of the study told Reuters via email that one limitation of their pro retrospective study was that it was not able to stratify patients based on severity of the disease. Same thing in hospital out, out, out. It is very possible that patients receiving remdesivir had a more complicated course of disease compared to patients receiving ivermectin. Yeah, sure. And we thought you were stratifying for those things. Another significant limitation was that the authors could not take into consideration vaccination status. So this is Sergi's fear. Remember Sergi's fear? They did a study, world's largest study about hydroxychloroquine. Retracted over fraud concerns, Sergi's fear. Lancet, retraction. Sergi's fear, if you look for it, you'll see many, many retractions. If you go to a good journal and they have a preprint that these authors continue to say, do you not know it is a preprint? The journals write BioRxIV posts many COVID-19 related papers. A reminder, they have not been formally peer reviewed and should not guide health related behavior or be reported in the press as conclusive. This is what you do to a peer, not peer reviewed thing. And by the way, I was actually going to talk about this today. That is why it is up here. And I got distracted with that. So then, of course, I fell for this as well. So this is where we are. My apologies for 40 minutes. You had to go to this rabbit hole with me. I think it's just generally. It would have been great if the author simply said our study is not up to speed anyways so um, please do me a favor there is a link in the description that is for drbean.com premium courses premium lectures this is my selling face um, I'm not allowed to put COVID videos there by one of the auditors. So these are not there. They are here in the, on the YouTube. Hopefully soon we'll put them there. But at this time, we're not allowed to, or I do not know if we will be allowed to or not. But there are another 800,000 videos, which are really hard work that we have done. And the price, if you check that link out, you'll see that the price is really like pennies. So... Uh, take advantage of that. 
and that also supports our work in the midst of all of this pressure. In addition to that, if you would like to support this work, there are links in the description. You can use PayPal or you can use uh, buy me a coffee or you can be a patron. Um, so thank you very much. Please like, subscribe and share. I'm not going to be able to put on monetization for this because this is a controversial topic. I had to delete the videos yesterday as well. So uh, I'll come back for some chit chat and we'll go for from there. So thank you very much.